Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the streets of London circa 1900. In case of emergency, follow the exit signs on either side of the stage, through the lobby or up the auditorium stairs behind you. A video recording of both casts will be made available, and you may greet your actor in the front of the stage immediately following the show for a 15-minute photo session. Please, no food or drink in the auditorium, no flash photography, and kindly science your cell phone, whatever that is. And now, Hillview Drama proudly presents Mary Poppins. In the east, there's a mist coming in Like something is brewing and about to begin Can't put me finger on what lies in store But I fear what's to happen, oh happen before A father, a mother, a daughter, a son the threads of their lives are all raveling undone. Something is needed to twist them as tight as a string you might use when you're flying a kite. Chim chim honey, chim chim, chari chim chub. <coughs> Hurry up, Jane, let's run! <sighs> You can't make us, you're only our nanny. <laughs> Morning, Miss Luck. And how was little Willoughby today? Very well, thank you, Bert. <laughs> Morning, Admiral. How was it looking? Of all London's byways where I doff me cap This one's the hardest to find on a map Cherry Tree Lane, as sweet as a song But the nannies who come here, they don't stay for long Chim chim honey, chim chim, cherry chim chum with the children and no nanny in the house. Me, that's who. Well, good riddance then. And mind you don't stumble on your way out. Katie Nana! Katie Nana, where are you going? Katie Nana! Katie Nana! Katie Nana! Katie Nana's gone, it isn't any wonder Driven after mended by your children's pranks Do you really think I've made another blunder? What on earth am I to say to Mr. Banks? George, dear, I'm feeling so bereft, dear Another nanny's left, dear Every nanny goes, we're unlucky I suppose We are never going to find the perfect nanny Nonsense! Precision and order, that's all that I ask The running of a household, a straightforward task The children, the servants, are all your domain Whilst I remain the sovereign of Cherry Tree Lane Coat 
The simple truth is, you've engaged six nannies in the last four months, and they've all been unqualified disasters. A nanny should govern, yes, a nanny should rule, thank you. A nanny is a paragon who suffers no fool. A nanny's a stalwart our children would gain by having such a nanny in Cherry Tree Lane. Horse George Bus. So take control of situations. Show your authority when interviewing staff. You know your role. They know their stations. Efficiency and forethought cut the jobs in half. Briefcase. I thought Katie Nana would be firm with the children. She always looks so cross. Winifred, never confuse efficiency with a liver complaint. Umbrella? If only we could find someone like your old nanny. I'm afraid that's not realistic, my dear. Few women alive could manage Miss Andrews' standards of efficiency. Besides, we could never afford someone of her caliber. Precision and order, he wants nothing less. It's like an army barracks. Yes, soon we're in the mess. No wonder the nannies are driven insane. We're living in a madhouse in Cherry Tree Lane. Now, Winifred, if you do want to please you know me. No, I do, George. Very well. Then place an advertisement in the Times stating that Jane and Michael Banks require the best possible nanny at the lowest possible weight. We'd better give them ours before they make another mistake. I would stress Father. that. You Yes? What's that you're holding, dear? We've written our own advertisement. What on earth? Please, George, I think we should hear it. Now, Winifred, none of your theatrics. It won't hurt to listen. Wanted a nanny for two adorable children. Adorable? Well, that's debatable, I must say. If you want this choice position, have a cheery disposition, rosy cheeks, no warmth. That's the part I've written. Play games, all sorts. You must be kind, you must be witty. Very sweet and fairly pretty. Well, of all the ridiculous. George, please. Take us on outings, give us treats. Sing songs, bring sweets. Never be cross or cruel. Never feed us pasta royal or gruel. Blech. Love us as a son and daughter. Never smell of barley water. I put that bit in too. If you won't scold and dominate us, we will never give you cause to hate us. We won't hide your spectacles so you can't see. Put toads in your bed or pepper in your tea. Hurry, Nanny. Many thanks. Sincerely, Jane and Michael Banks. That's quite enough Tommy rot for one day. Will you, will you please go upstairs and let me get to work? They were only trying to help. It won't help anyone to make me late. Where's my hat? 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 George, dear. Hat! Hat! Why you put it down here? I'm sure Bola Hat can simply disappear. Do you think they'll find a nanny who doesn't run away? He's brushed it with boot polish. Precision and order, that's all that I ask. The running of a household, a straightforward task. The children, the servants, are all your domain. Whilst I remain the sovereign, mind you use the day well. You remain the sovereign. I shall be held with six o'clock sharp. He remains the sovereign of Cherry Tree Yes? I've come and answered to the advertisement. What advertisement? We haven't placed any advertisement. Not, not yet. George and Winifred Banks live here, do they not? Mr. and Mrs. Banks live here, yes. And you are looking for a nanny? Well, I suppose. Very well, then. Now, let's see. Play games all sorts, which I most certainly can. Take us on outings, give us treats. Michael, it's our advertisement. Rosy cheeks and fairly pretty. There's no objection on that score, I hope. Oh, none at all. I'm glad to hear it. But, oh, take it up with Mrs. Banks. She manages all that side of things. 
Nothing domestic has anything to do with me. And don't forget the references. I make it rule we'll never to give references. Oh, but I thought it was usual. A very old-fashioned idea to my mind. The best people never acquire them now. Oh, I see. Well, you'll have every third Thursday evening off from five until nine. The best people give every second Wednesday or from six till late, ma'am. And that is what I shall take. Oh, well, um, it's all settled then? As long as I'm satisfied, I'll see the children now. <laughs> How did you get the... Awesome. <laughs> Daddy put it in the fireplace nice and it probably burns and... <gasps> now, this is... Oh, Mary Poppins. Jane, don't stare. And close your mouth, Michael. We are not a codfish. Best foot forward, spit spot. <laughs> Mrs. Brill, I think we have a new nanny. She passed the interview then. Oh, I did. Very tidy, I must say. Tidy than I was expecting. Who's responsible for that? Mrs. Bree! <laughs> I am. I like to keep things neat. Do you indeed? Well, I look forward to making use of that. If there's one thing I can appreciate, it's a child whose word I can depend on. Who's she when she's at home? That's Valentine. She's mine. From the look on her face, I'm not sure she'd agree with you. <sighs> she's just a door and I don't want to play with her now. Treat her like that and she might not want to play with you. Now, first things first, I always say the proper place to hang a hat is on a hat stand. There's nothing in it. Oh, we'd better keep an eye on this one. She's tricky. Mary Poppins, how could you know what we wanted in a nanny uh, when we made our list? Your list? I am not an item in the weekly shop, thank you very much. How did you come then? It was as if the wind just blew you here. It did. Now, ah, uh, stand over there. Just as I thought, a noisy, mischievous, troublesome little boy. You're making that up. A noisy, mischievous, tr... Now you, thoughtless, short-tempered and untidy. I don't believe you. Let me see. By the time the wind has blown the weather vane around, I'll show you if I can. No matter what the circumstance, for one thing I'm renowned, my character is spit, spot, spick, and span. What's about your measurement, Mary Poppins? I'm practically perfect in every way. Practically perfect, so people say. Each virtue virtually knows no bound. Each trait is great and patently sound. I'm practically perfect from head to toe. If I had a fault, it would never dare to show. I'm so practically perfect in every way. Ah, lovely. <laughs> Both prim and proper and never too stern. Well educated, yet willing to learn. I'm clean and honest, my manner refined. And I wear shoes of the sensible kind. I suffer no nonsense, and whilst I remain, there's nothing else I feel I need explain. I'm practically perfect in every way. Practically perfect, that's my forte. Uncanny nannies are hard to find. Unique yet make unspeakably kind. I'm practically perfect, not slightly soiled. Running like an engine that's just been freshly oiled. I'm so practically perfect in every way. Well, those are my credentials. Perhaps you have a few questions. Not temperamental. Never. Not grouchy or gruff. What's the very fault? Will you stay tender when the going gets tough? Quite the contrary. Do you read stories without a big fuss? Mm-hmm. Or 
have objections to playing with us. Oh, I like games. But I choose them. But I That's not them again. fair. Some minor improvements may not go amiss. But at all times you must remember this. You're practically perfect in every way. I guarantee. Practically, practically perfect. We hope you'll stay. Each virtue, virtue we know snowbound. Each trait is great. Pen paint to Lisa. I'll take my telescope, thank you. La da da da. La da da da. La da 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 da. Jane, Michael, beds, please. But that's not fair. I didn't say it was fair. I said I was practically perfect. And here's my aim. By the time I leave here, you both will be the same. You'll be practically perfect. Practically perfect. We will be practically perfect in every way. Come along, children, best reports, principal. Chim chimani, chim chimani, chim chim charu. I does what I likes and I likes what I do. Today I'm a scriva, and as you can see, a scriva's an artist of highest degree, and it's all me own work from me own memory. Oh, Lommy, not these again. Come on, Mr. Parkkeeper, it's just making me pictures like it always is. There ain't no harm in them. I'll be the true of that. And I say you're interfering with the public railing. I want to remove this. Uh, that is, I. Uh, just you watch it, that's all. Just you watch it. Stay right where you are. I'd know that silhouette anywhere. Mary Poppins. It's nice to see you, Bert. Well, I must say, you do look slow. <laughs> he knows you. He can't know you. You've only just arrived. I wasn't born one minute before I walked into your house, Michael Banks. Have you met these two, Bert? <laughs> I've seen them running about chasing a kite. It isn't a real kite. <sighs> so, what are you up to? Mary Poppins says it's a game. It's called a walk in the park. <laughs> Some game? I'd rather eat spinach. Come on, Bert, you're due for a break and you promised you'd take me out when we met again. Or have you forgotten? Of course I ain't, Mary, but... Oh dear, is that all you've got? Never mind my treat. And no one's charging for the trees in the sky, are they? Mary Poppins, is he really coming with us? Why shouldn't he? Well, to start off with, he's very dirty, isn't he? Father would never approve. What's that? You can't come with us. You're too dirty. And we don't want to go to the stinky park anyway. Oh, yes, you do. Because when you walk with Mary Poppins, you go places you'd never dreamed of. And if she says there's a game, well, she's got something in mind. You can be certain of that. That's a picture of the park, isn't it? That's not the park. Not our park, anyway. Look, the trees are much brighter green and the sky's quite a different blue. I think you'll find it's just the way I've drawn it. Oh, that it takes is a spark. Then something as plain as a park becomes a wonderland. All you have to do is look anew. Then you'll understand. Why, it's a jolly old day with Mary. Mary makes your heart so light. Oh, really? When the day is grey and ordinary 
Mary makes the sun shine bright. You do talk nonsense, Bert. Oh, Her happiness is blooming all around her. <laughs> the daffodils are smiling at the dark. I haven't the faintest idea what. When Mary, oh, Dan, you feel so grand. Your heart starts speaking like a big brass band. You've enough brass for all of us. Oh, it's a jolly old day with Mary. No wonder that it's Mary that we love. Come on, you two! Boring! Just like other nannies thinking Parks are good for us It's just statues of some grannies I don't understand all the fuss Is she doing it to spite us? We could lose her for a lark Perhaps it's all a plot I'll tell you what, she seems so different, but, but I bet she's not. There is nothing to excite us in the park. You're quite wrong, you know. What? Who are you? I'm Nelius. Surely you know that. You sat beneath me long enough. I've waited half a century to take a walk on a sunny day like this. To the glorious day, bright as a morning May. I feel like I could fly. Have you ever seen the girl so green or a blue eye sky? Blue, blue, blue sky. Oh, it's a jolly holiday with Mary. Better dies I've never known. You can ask the passing statuary. Nothing's ever said. Constable, you do look tip top if I may say so. Each man with his dog will stand a gog to see a statue take a gentle jog. Oh, it's a jolly holiday with Mary. No wonder that it's Mary that we it's love. It's a jolly holiday with you, but gentlemen like you are few. Though you're just a diamond in the rough, but underneath your blood is blue. You never think of pressing your advantage. Forbearance is the hallmark of your creed. A lady needn't fear when you are near. Your sweet gentility is crystal clear. It's crystal clear. Oh, it's a jolly holiday with you, but a jolly, jolly holiday with you.
happen? Yes. But how? Mary Poppins, of course. Well, how do you know Mary Poppins? She's an old friend of my father. Your father? You're a statue. You can't have a father. Well, if that's true, then why do I miss him so much? Isn't he just one of the other statues? No, he lives far from here. Do you really miss him? Wouldn't you miss your father if you hardly ever saw him? I'll have to think about that. <laughs> that's it! That's it! That's what it was! The splinter's half empty! The statue's gone! Do you mean you've lost your marbles? This is your fault, ain't it? I knew we should have trouble when you first arrived. Now we've got a statue! Ah! Oh, Lummy! Nelius. <laughs> Nelius, will you play with us again? Of course I will. I'm not going anywhere. Then we'll see you soon. <laughs> Goodbye, Nelius. Goodbye. Mary Poppins. Nelius must be so lonely. Could his father ever come to stay? Anything can happen if you let it. How long will you stay? We'll see. You are going to stay, aren't you, Mary Poppins? I'll stay till the wind changes. Now run along in. Night, Jane. Night, Michael. Good night, Mary. Good night, Bert. We don't do it. Jane and Mike want to say goodnight. Tell them you've given me the message. George, please. Oh, Daddy, we've had a fantastic day. We sang with the busker, danced with the statue, and met Queen Victoria. You wouldn't have approved If you know that, then why did you do it? Daddy, could I have a kite? The proper one? Could you fly it? You could always teach me. When would I have the time to do that? Daddy, who was the father of Neelius? Will you please go upstairs and let me get on? Good night. Poor Michael, all he cares about is flying kites. And his beloved astronomy, of course, but... I used to love astronomy at his age. My nanny, Miss Andrews, soon beat it out of me. I suppose we do need a nanny, George. It is out of the question to do without one. Don't be upset, of course we need a nanny. All the best people have nannies, so the wives can do charity work and entertain. Which reminds me, how is your tea party coming along? I'm not sure. Seems so odd to send out invitations to people I hardly know. Ah, but they're people you should know. Remember, by your friends shall ye be judged. But that's the point. They're not my friends. Actually, I heard today from Clemmy Bunting. She's rehearsing a new play at the moment, and I thought I might ask her... How many times to must I ask you? I wish you to sever all connection with that part of your life. George, I was an actress. Lots of people might find that interesting. Though, you always talk as if I should be ashamed of it. Well, it's not exactly something to be proud of. Winifred, dearest, I'm only thinking of you. I want people to admire you, to respect you. I know, George, but sometimes it's hard. It is not hard. It is your job to be Mrs. Banks. And what is your job? To pay for everything. <laughs> <coughs> what is it now? I was only going to kiss you. Oh, oh, all right. By the way, are you going to ask Mary Poppins about this afternoon? I don't think so. Very well. Just make sure she's doing things our way and not hers. What good are rules if you can bend them? We need a nanny who is disciplined and stern. With boys and girls, you don't befriend them. I fear that Mary Poppins has a lot to learn. Mrs. Banks should be an easy rule, and yet it's one which I don't seem too good at on the whole. I have a comfy home, I have a simple life, I have a name which tells the world I'm someone else's wife. Being Mrs. Banks, what does that entail? When facing tests of character, I always seem to fail. And as for his best people, well, I'd like to say no thanks. They're not 
exactly my idea of being Mrs. Banks. I still feel as if I'm dreaming so much fun in just one day. When Mary holds your hand, you feel so grand. Your heart starts beating like a big brass band. I'm sure Neelius is beaming. Let's hope she will stay. Good night, Neelius. you learn but me I was told when I was small just learn a trade so I learned them all chim chim honey chim chim cheree gotta keep the streets ship shape admiral there's some rough weather on every voyage admiral Sandwiches too early. They'll get stale before the guests arrive. Everything's under control, ma'am. What about the cake? Cooling on the tray, waiting to be iced. And you're quite sure you know how to ice it? Quite sure. And in case you're worried, I've not been exchanged by the fairies for a total nincompoop. No. <laughs> no. Well, I'll just go up and check the drawing room then. I'd like to be helpful. And I'd like to be rich, but the good lord that otherwise. Mother wants it in the drawing room. Well, she can't have me. I have enough on my plate as it is. She says you can tell Roberts and I what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Does she indeed? Well, why don't I have a smoke near the gasworks for good measure? Please, Mrs. Brill, I don't mind. Honest. All right, I'll give you one task and one task only. And so help me, if you get this wrong, I will swing for you and sing as they pull the lever. Well, what is it, Mrs. Burrill? Put the icing tools next to put the icing tools next to the cake, and I'll need a bowl of hot water to warm them. I'll make the icing as soon as I'm back. Icing tools, cake, or water. I'll make the icing as soon as I'm back. Now, do you think you can manage that? Is that all? For you? Yes. For me? No. Once the cake's done, I have the sandwiches next because Madame wants them fresh, so we can't start them until there's no time to finish them. I swear, a slave in ancient Rome was on a pleasure cruise compared to my life in this house. <sighs> well, do you just stand there, Roberts and I? Right. No. What are you looking for? A bow for the water. Michael, why don't we make the icing? Because we don't know how. Don't be so feeble. Go get the eggs. If Mrs. Brill can do it, it can't be that hard. Are there eggs and icing? They're on mine. I don't think Mrs. Brill will thank well you. Well, then she will be guilty of great ingratitude. Is it supposed to look like that? It doesn't look like this when Mrs. Brill does it. Don't be impertinent and set the cake. Honest, Miss Jane, I was only trying to be nice. If you would... <laughs> ah! <laughs> Mrs. Brill, go up and get... Ready now. What have you done? Roberts and I... Robertson, I? Oh dear, should I call a doctor? I don't think that would be necessary, ma'am. 
How could you be so unkind when you know how important my party is? You deserve some very nasty medicine, just you wait till bedtime. Oh, I don't we think we should wait till then, ma'am. Why not go up and get changed? We'll clear up here, won't we? Well, we're not ill. I won't take the medicine, and you can't make me. In that, as in so many things, your information is faulty. Open. But <laughs> it's strawberry ice. Now you. I'm not sure I like strawberry ice. I'm not sure I care. Open. Well, I'm cordial. Now, off we go, you two. Michael, I know you like to keep things neat. Jane. I told you she was tricky. Must we? Can't Roberts and I do it when he wakes up? He is a servant. With that attitude, you'll get through a lot of stuff before you're very old. Besides, in every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun and snap. The jobs are game. And every task you undertake becomes a piece of cake, a lock, a spree. It's very clear to see that a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, the medicine go down, medicine go down. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down in a most delightful way. Oh, my point exactly. The honeybees that fetch the nectar from the flowers to the comb never tire of ever buzzing to and fro because they take a little nip from every flower that they sip and hence, and hence they, find they find their task is not a grind for a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down the medicine go down medicine go down just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down in a most delightful way. Spit spot. Cups on saucers, please. Is this how you usually do it, Michael? Rum punch, my favorite. Go down, medicine, go down. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down in a most delightful way. So, just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. The medicine go down. The medicine go down. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Delightful way. In the most delightful way. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. The medicine go down. Medicine go down. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. In a most delightful way. In the most. Children, best reports. My apologies, ma'am, but apparently these came this morning, and Roberts and I forgot to give them to you. They're from your guests, ma'am. They're not coming. None of them. Oh, do you think we chose the wrong day? No, ma'am. I think you chose the wrong people.
Poppins, where are we going today? I thought we'd play our next game. What game? A visit to the bank. That's not a game. Did Daddy agree? If he did, you must have put the idea into his head somehow. What an impertinent thing to say. Me, putting ideas into the other people's heads. Really? <laughs> have dreams of power and position and it's our job to back them to the hills for shrewd investment and advice they'll pay the price better mortgage banks are built banks are worth i see here von hustler is coming in again today have you made your decision i believe so sir good good be sure it's the right one Herr Banks, what objections can you have? My security is more than adequate and Latin America is an expanding market. What does the matter? Have you no courage? But, Mr. Von Hustler, what I haven't been able to grasp is, what exactly is your final product? What do you think? Money, of course. Yes, money, but I wonder, making money out of money, is that enough? Are you man enough to be a banker? A man has dreams of building an empire to make his name in many distant lands. And in the new world, I'm told, we'll soon strike gold. Let's seize our chance with both our arms. Have you come to your decision, Mr. Banks? There's a town of good people whose future depends on you. I know that. Give us this chance. You won't regret it. The factory could be running in weeks and expanding before the year's out. Please, Mr. Banks, I'd give it everything I've got. Believe me. I do believe you, Mr. Northbrook, and I've tried to find a way, but there just is not the collateral. What about my workforce? Decent men who want a better life. They're my collateral. My men have dreams to earn an honest living. A wife and kids, a home to call their own. If you'd invest in us today, it paves the way. I promise we'd repay the loan. I'm sorry, Mr. Norton. But but I just can't see the bank! It's, it's so wonderful! wonderful. What on earth are you doing here? Can't you see I'm busy? No, it's all right. Um, no man should be too busy for his own children. What are you here for, young man? Have you come for some money as well? Hardly. What would they need money for? Well, it's never too early to learn its value. I know the value of this. Sixpence. No, that's its worth. Its value is in the way that you spend it. Do good and may you have good luck. And what do you say to Mr. Northbrook? Thank, Thank you. I'll wait outside. What is the meaning of this? Really, Mary Poppins, I am not without a sense of humor. Aren't you, Daddy? No, no, I am not. But when I was a little boy, I would never have dared interrupt my father. Were you ever a little boy? <laughs> of course I was. But my nanny, Miss Andrew, kept me out of my father's way. And he'd have been very annoyed if she hadn't. What about your mother? I shouldn't think I saw either of them more than once a week. Didn't they mind? Mind? They were glad to be rid of me. Then who kissed you goodnight? Miss Andrew? Certainly not. There was no time for hugs and kisses and all that sobbing nonsense. What's the matter? Poor Daddy. Poor? What do you mean, poor? That's what made me the man I am, eh, Mary Poppins? Yes, I'm afraid it did. That's quite enough. You've seen where I work and I have a great deal to do. Uh, Daddy, when you invest the bank's money, what are you looking for? A good man or a good idea? I suppose I should say a good idea. But a good man is much rarer and much more valuable. Come along, children.
Mr. Von Hustler, I've considered your arguments, but I'm afraid my answer is no. So you don't recognize a good idea? Perhaps not, but I recognize a good man when I see one. You will regret this air box. A man has dreams that life hasn't broken. A man with hopes, ambitions to fulfill. A man you're certain at first glance deserves a chance. Now, Mr. Northbrook, when exactly could the factory open? Thank you, sir. You won't regret this. Tuppence, tuppence, a bag. Tuppence, 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 a bag. There's that horrible old woman. Don't point, and for your information, she's not in the least horrible. But she's just a bundle of rags. When will you learn to look past what you see? Early each day to the steps of St. Paul's. The little old bird woman comes In her own special way to the people she calls Come, buy my bags for love crumbs Come feed the little birds, show them you care And you'll be glad if you do The young ones are hungry their nests are so bare, all it takes is toppings from you. Feed the birds, toppings a bag, toppings, toppings, toppings a bag. Feed the birds. That's what she cries While overhead The birds fill the skies What are you doing? I'm going to give her my sixpence What a waste That's a matter of opinion Here, one bag please Save your sixpence All around the cathedral the saints and apostles look down as she sells her wares. Although you can't see them, you know they are smiling each time someone shows that he cares. Though her words are simple and few, Listen, listen, she's calling to you. Feed the birds, toppings a bag. Toppings, toppings, toppings a bag. All gone? Well, here she is now. You can tell yourself. Ruff! Isn't that Miss Locke's dog, Willoughby? Don't interrupt when someone's barking. You were saying. Ruff, 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 ruff. Really? Well, if she keeps wandering off, perhaps it would be better if you kept her on a lead. Ah, oh, look, here she comes now. Ruff, ruff. Bert, 
Can Willoughby really talk? Of course he can. Getting him to stop's the problem. Now how do you learn to talk dog? How do you think? Master the grammar. Practice when you can. And avoid mongrels. Far, far too, too much, much slang. slang. Now, come along. I can't stand here all day talking shop. Talking shop? What a silly expression. There's nothing silly about it in the least. Uh, what do you buy in a talking shop? Conversations, of course. Well, I've never seen a talking shop. Well, there is only one and it belongs to Mrs. Corey. Who's Mrs. Corey? Oh, it's Mrs. Corey. Mrs. Corey is older than anyone in the world. She went to William before he went conquering, to Vlad before he went impaling, and to Alexander when he weren't so great. We'll have to call it a shop in the park. There is no shop in the park. Remember, anything can happen if you let it. That's it. I've run out of conversations. Good day to you, Mrs. Corey. Well, 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 if it isn't Mary Poppins with Jane and Michael Banks. She knows us. And how is poor little Georgie? Who? Georgie Banks, your father. He used to give his nanny the slip and come into my shop here in secret. It can't have been the same George Banks. That would have been over 40 years ago when no one can remember back that far. Listen, dearie, I remember everything. I remember George used to love my gingerbread. I wonder if we've got any left. Annie, Fanny, look lively. Yes, mother. There you are, gingerbread pieces with gingerbread stars. Uh-uh, Georgie always saved his stars. Now, Mary Poppins, what can I do for you? Well, I did want an ounce of conversations. Well, I'm out of conversations and I'm right out of words, too. You see, I've had a lot of chatterboxes in here today. But let me see what we have left. Ooh, I do have some letters and a little bit of back chat. An ounce, you say? That'll be 15 letters. Go on, take your pick. Jane, you can choose seven. I've got D, G, R, U, C, L, and I. They're no good. You can't make any words out of them. Yacht and Michael, seven more. I'll choose A, F, S. E, T, O, and P. And I'll choose an X. Now, what words can we make? Uh, well, I see dog and cat. Routoplex, that's nine. Lapatophrys, that's eleven. Nearly there. Those don't count. You made them up. And where do you think words came from in the first place? Someone had to make them up. You know, we can always use the same letter more than once. Now, let me see. Super, Caliph, Ragel Eastic, Expi, Ali, Dushas. That's not a word. Of course it's a word. And unless I'm very much mistaken, I think it's going to prove a rather useful one. When trying to express oneself, it's frankly quite absurd to leaf through lengthy lexicons to find the perfect word. Our little spontaneity keeps conversation keen. You need to find a way to say precisely what you mean. Supercalifragilistic expialidocious, even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. If you say it loud enough, you'll always sound precocious. Supercalifragilistic expialidocious. I'm diddle little little I'm diddle I. 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 Those stone age men were chatting, simply grunting would suffice. Though if they heard this word, they might have used it once or twice. I'm sure Egyptian pharaohs would have grasped it in a jiff. Then every single pyramid would bear this hieroglyph. Oh, supercalifragilistic expialidocious. Say it, and wild animals will not seem so ferocious. Add some further flourishes, it's so rococo cocious. Supercalifragilistic expialidocious. I'm um, diddle little, I'm diddle I. I'm um, diddle little, I'm diddle I. I'm diddle little, I'm diddle I. I'm diddle little, I'm diddle I. The druids could have carved it on their mighty monoliths. The ancient Greeks, I'm certain, would have used it in their myths. I'm sure the Roman Empire only entered the abyss because those Latin scholars never heard a word like this. 
Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. If you say it's off, me, the effect can be hypnotious. Check your breath before you speak in case it's halitosis. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I'm doing a little, little, I'm doing a 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 little, it backwards, which is Doshigali Expert Fragicali Rupus. She may be tricky, but she's bloody good. <laughs> so when the cat has got your tongue, there's no need for dismay. Just summon up this word and then you've got a lot to say. Pick out those eight in consonants and sixteen vowels as well, and put them in an order which is very hard to spell. S U P E R C A L I F R A G I L I S T I C E X P I A L I D O C I O U S My pants S U P E R C A L I F R A G I Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. 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 S U P E R C A L I F R A G I O I S T I C E X P I A L I D O C I O U S. Here we go. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Even though it's something quite atrocious, if you say it loud enough, you'll only suffer cautious. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Alley expolistic. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. The winds may blow, but who's to know exactly what they're bringing? Good news or bad, happy or sad, the pendulum keeps swinging. All right, stand back. You are to never come near this vase, nor no one else but me neither. That is an heirloom. Heirloom. And while I do this, you are to stay completely immobile. Immobile. Do not move a muscle. Muscle. Do not breathe. Do you hear me? <laughs> I might as well be dead. Don't give me ideas. A game is played, a change is made, but still the road is long. And though they might yet fly a kite, sometimes the wind's too strong. George, what's happened? Are you ill? No, should I be? Of course not. Only 
Why on earth are you home so early? Is everything all right? No, everything's all wrong. Oh dear, what is it? If you must know, I refused some German chap alone. It seems he's taken it to our chief rivals. They gave him the money and now it's turned into a gold mine. Well, they can't expect you to get it right every time. Can't they? That's exactly oh, what they expect. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious Even though the son of it is something quite atrocious If you say it loud that enough- That is more than loud enough! Go to your room! But we were just- I don't care what you were just upstairs now! Where's my briefcase? Jane? Michael, will you give it to me? Must I put up with this behavior? You're their mother. Why can't you do something? Well, I can try not shouting for stuff. Mary Poppins, you are here to teach the children manners and just look at them. They're a pair of little savages. If I had my way, you'd be out of this George! house. George, you're tired. Mary Poppins, don't bring the children down tonight. Mr. Banks is quite exhausted. Perhaps you could keep them occupied. I hope you haven't forgotten, ma'am. Tonight's my evening out. What? Oh dear, I had forgotten. I suppose the best people wouldn't ask you to change your plans? No, ma'am, they wouldn't. I thought not. That's not fair. Daddy loses his temper and was shut up in the nursery. Daddy's mean and rotten and I hate him. Jane, take that back this instant. I will not have you criticize your father. Why not? He criticizes you. Last week he said you were neither use nor ornament. How dare you? I heard him say it and so did you. Sometimes people say things they don't mean. Take the children upstairs, please, Mary Poppins. George? What is it now? Thought you might like to talk about it. What would be the point? Perhaps I can help. That would only make matters worse. George, I'm serious. If you have troubles, I'd like to share them. Don't worry. You will. The fact is, I've been suspended without salary until they decide what to do with me. Twists and turns. Ups and downs, one moment smiles, the next moment frowns. But bad tempered faces, I'd better change quick. Cause if the wind changes, the face might just sick. Chim chim honey, chim chim chari, chim chari. We're going out and we get left on our own. You've plenty of toys to play with. I don't want to, they're boring. They might say the same about you. Why does Daddy get so cross? Fathers are supposed to look after the children, not yell at them all the time. Maybe, but if you, have you asked yourself who looks after the fathers when things go wrong? The mothers, I suppose. Not the children? Wouldn't that be rather upside down? Sometimes families are upside down. For a while, anyway. Well, I don't want to be part of an upside down family. I wish I could just run away. Why don't you? Somebody might adopt you. But you'd miss me. No, I wouldn't. I could have your toys. No, you cannot. Yes, I could, and I jolly well would. Give that to me. Ah! Now look what you've done. Poor Valentine. What's she ever done to you? She's a doll, silly. She couldn't do anything. That's all you two now into bed at once. But we had a f haven't had our cookies I will have no butts, and there will be no cookies in milk either. If you can't be good, you may as well be sorry. I wish you would just leave us alone. Be careful of the things you wish for. Poor Valentine, go inside and make yourself presentable. Well, I won't go to sleep, and you can't make me. In that, as in so many things, your, your information, information is faulty. Playing the game, taking your turn. Some children lose, some children learn. Treat the toys nicely and maybe they'll treat you the same. Playing the game. Are you feeling any better, Valentine? Much better, thank you. Tempers are frayed, tempers are lost. Nobody stops to think of the cost. But they tore my arm again. Oh dear, children who lose their temper will lose everything else in the end. They're not playing the game, not playing fair. 
Not with the door, not with the bell. Crowd on the floor and left it and they were to play. Playing the game. Please tell them, Mary Poppins. Why don't you tell them? What's happened to the toys? Make them get them small and back in their box. Why? You've hurt them and called them names. Now it's their turn. Summing the toys, now is the time to tell of your woes, to tell of the crime. Crime! Come one, come all, enter the fray. They need to hear what you have to say. Stomp and shout creates our troubles. They need to learn the value of us. Well, you think you know everything. I couldn't agree more. Jane, they're all toys and we'll do what we want with them. So there. So there indeed. <laughs> The smoke is all billowed and curled. Between pavement and stars is the chimney sweeps world. Where there's hardly no day and hardly no night, there's things off in shadows and off ways in light on the rooftops of London. Q. What a sight. Oh, so you are sweep now, are you? Best views in the world, eh? And who gets to see it? The birds, the stars, and the chimney sweeps. Nothing to be today. Now, as the ladder of life has been strung, you may think a sweep's on the bottom most wrong. Though I spends me time in the ashes and smoke, and this so wide world, there's no happy a bloke. Chim chimani, chim chimani, chim chim chimani. A sweep is, is as, as lucky as, as lucky, lucky can be. Chim chimani, chim chimani, chim chim charu. Good luck will rub off when he shakes hands with you. Or blow me a kiss, but. And that's lucky too. Oh, so you're going then? The wind has changed. But the good kids, Mary. Would I be bothering with them if they weren't? But I can't help them if they won't let me. And there's no one so hard to teach as the child who knows everything. So? So they've got to do the next bit on their own. Chim chim money, chim chim money, chim chim cherry. When you're with a sweep, you're in glad company. Goodbye, Bert. 
chim 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 chari when you're with the sweep you're in glad company nowhere is there a more happier crew than them's what sings chim chim chari chim charu chim chim ani chim chim chari chim cha cheerio bet keep an eye on them for me She can't have left us! Oh yes, she can! I've just taken all of her toys! Well, what does the note say? What in the name of heaven are you two doing out here? Where's my poppins? Gone. Gone? Well, if that doesn't take the bloomin' biscuit. Mrs. Brill, what does au revoir mean? Why? Because that's what she's written in this letter. Dear Jane and Michael, keep playing the game. Au revoir, Mary Poppins. It's French, I know that. Does it mean God bless you or good luck? No, till we meet again. Now, get inside before you catch your death. We will now be having a short intermission. There are concessions for sale in the lobby. Please, no food or drink in the pack. Thank you.
intermission will be ending shortly. Oh, okay. 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 And remember, no food or drink in the pack. Someone is returning. You're amazing.
Mrs. Brill, is the nursery tidy? As tidy as I can make it, ma'am. If you knew how hard it was to track her down. Really, ma'am? Fancy that. Call they get through nannies for a flipping pastime. Now when one returns, they make this fearful fuss. Never liked her much when she was here the last time. At least she makes life easier for both of us. Well, it is her, isn't it? Well, I don't know who else. Why is it such a secret? Do you think that she's returned to get things back the way they were? The note says, till we meet again. I just know it must be her. Oh my goodness, she'll be here any moment. Now, where's George? George, dear, you're going to be surprised. Minister, you know very well that I hate surprises, even at the best. Oh, not this one. Oh, George, I do believe you're going to be proud of me for once. Precision and order, that's perfectly true. Can really make a difference. I found her for you. Clear thinking, some judgment, and now we'll regain a home you can be proud of in Cherry Tree Lane. <gasps> Hurry up, everybody, into the hall. I wanted to find everything. Spit spot, spick and spick and span. Our sense of excitement is hard to contain. Order is returning. Someone is returning to Cherry Tree Lane. Good morning. The Holy Terror! <laughs> Miss Andrew, it's so lovely to meet you at last. I do hope you had a good journey. It was thoroughly unpleasant. I never enjoy travel. You must be poor George's wife. Your flower beds are disgracefully untidy. Take my advice, plant evergreens. Or better still, have nothing there at all, just plain cement courtyard. Oh, but to Miss Andrew, I'm so fond of flowers. Then you are a very silly woman. Where did George go? Oh, he... I'm afraid he had an urgent appointment. For which, no doubt, he was late, as usual. It's not much of a house, is it? Oh, well, we like it. D then it doesn't take a lot to keep you happy. Look at the dust! There and there! Filth! Well, we are rather short-staffed at the moment. Has anyone ever cleaned those curtains? Ooh. Now, just a minute! Ah, you must be the children. <laughs> Pity, I don't suppose you know who I am? Yes, we do. You're the Holy Terror. Impudent boy! <laughs> You're Jane, I suppose. Why aren't wearing any stockings? I don't like them. Tut! What manners! I can see there's, I can see there's not a minute to lose. These children have been spoiled, have arrived here just in time. By chance I've brought the punishment that best befits the crime. Brimstone and treacle and cod liver oil, liberal doses of each. These are the treats from which children recoil, the lessons I'm going to teach. Just follow my model and don't morally coddle, it may lead the irksome to irk. So seek satisfaction from punitive action. Brimstone and treacle will work. Open. Does it taste as bad as it smells? Worst. Do I have to? Well, I. Open. <laughs> Brimstone and treacle and carbolic soap. These are the tools of my trade. With spoonfuls of sugar, you don't have a hope of seeing that changes are made. Where manners are chronic, my tincture's the tonic that's certain to wipe off a smack. Just pour out a ration in matronly fashion. Brimstone and treacle will work. Your son will go to boarders at once. As for the girl, I should take charge of myself. I won't stand for whining or whinging or whimpering, crying or lying or sobbing or simpering. I fear it's clear that in these two such bad habits lie. 
curtain to throttle, then uncork the bottle. Brimstone and treacle will work. <coughs> now, show me my room. <coughs> Brimstone and treacle. Dismiss her. You know, I'm disappointed. Truly, I am. I really thought it was going to be, uh, you know, with the umbrella. What are we going to do? The only thing we can run away. Now, your old friend ain't gonna hurt you. Oh, Bert, it's you. <laughs> You're filthy. Perhaps a smudge or two. It so happens today I'm a chimney sweep. Now, what's the matter? And who's after you? The nastiest nanny in the world. The nastiest nanny in the world, eh? Well, you two should know. You've been through enough of them. Is she really as bad as all that? She looks like something that would eat its young. <laughs> Miss... Andrew was Daddy's nanny. Which explains a lot. Poor Daddy. Ever since he stopped working, all he does is sit and mopes. Mary Poppins used to say he needed our help, but now it's too late. Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. I tell you what, why don't we start things off with a bit of a shake for good luck? Why are we shaking hands with you bring us luck? Didn't anyone ever tell you it's lucky to shake a sweep's end? Well, what do you do if you want some luck? Oh, well, I shake hands with myself. Now, what have we got here? Michael, look! It's a real one! What's the matter? You've always wanted to fly a proper kite. I've always wanted to fly one with Daddy. Of course you have. But you need to know how it's done first. Get some training in and you're making the proudest father in the country. You really think so? Just you're not just saying that? Did I say the country? The old blooming empire, more like it. With tuppence for paper and strings, you can have your own set of wings. With your feet on the ground, you're a bird in flight. With your fist held in tight to the string of your kite. Oh, let's go fly a kite up to the highest height. Let's go fly a kite and send it soaring up. Try again. It's not litter, it's a kite. Oh, a kite? My word, I haven't seen one of these since I was a little boy. Now we'll wind her up, give her a run, and away she'll go. But I want to do it. You'll let me help, won't you? Seeing as I haven't flown one since I was a little boy. No, <laughs> all right. When you send in it flying up there, all at once you might to the air. You can dance on the breeze of the houses and trees with your fist held in tight to the string of your kite. Oh, 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 let's go fly a kite up to the highest height. Let's go fly a kite and send it. You can do it, Paul. 
Mary Poppins, I knew you'd come back! Don't squeeze, I'm not a sardine in a tin. And where are your coats? We didn't have any time to put them on. And why not, may I ask? Uh, because we've run away. It's been so awful since you found way, and I'm Miss Andrews here, and Daddy's ruined, and we never helped him like you wanted us to, and we were too stupid to hear what you were saying, oh and Oh my eye, but your life's a tragedy. Now let's go home and don't dawdle. But she's there. She came this morning as a surprise for Daddy, did she? Well, maybe I'll be surprised for her. That was a lovely greeting, that. I met Mary. Welcome. Your sight for sore eyes. You really are Mary Poppins. I told you they were good kids, Mary. And I told you they were worth bothering with. Uh, and now, see here. It's against the regulations coming down from the sky like that. And where from, I'd like to know, eh? Where from? If I were a park keeper, I should straighten my cap and button my collar. Come along, children. Aren't you going to shake hands with Bert for good luck? No. Why not? We have. I don't need any luck, thank you. may shatter but memories stay the things that really matter I lost on the way the sovereign the master and long may he reign the famous good for nothing of cherry tree lane They'll find the way home in no time. Let's face it, ma'am, they've had enough practice. This time they're not being naughty. I'm afraid I've made them unhappy. I'm afraid I've made everyone unhappy. They'll turn up, don't you worry. George, dear, I know it hurts your pride, dear. But you can't just run and hide, dear. Why can't you see that I'm here? And I am on your side Whenever you spoke of Miss Andrew You showered the woman with praise But now that I've met dear Miss Andrew There are one or two things I'd rephrase To think you were raised by that monster And carried that burden through life If only you had seen that you could share it with your wife Being Mrs. Banks It's easy to forget The way I felt that summer's day The day that we first met Being Mrs. Banks Being kissed by you a man of dreams who made me feel that wishes could come true. And now, although you're lost, it's time that we close ranks. I'll fight for the man who needs freeing, the real you who no one is seeing. And you'll find a way of just being. She's killed everyone. Perhaps they're all dead. Not like that, you stupid boy. No, they're not all dead. What's that noise? It's a bird I might have known. 
Did she? Well, frankly, that's not a surprise. Locked in this cage and not free in the skies for two years. How shameful. Yes, of course, that's a field I know well. An hour no longer, your wings will grow stronger. Once you are free from this cell. What kind of bird is it? A lark. You are seeing a lark in the first time for in the cage and the last. <laughs> My pleasure. Oh, don't mention it. I'm going downstairs to fetch Caruso, my lark. You say they're in the grate again. So you've decided to come crawling back, have you? Well, I think we know what's needed now. Brimstone and treacle, my favorite liquor that will make runaway stop. Impudent children respond so much quicker when forced to drink every last drop. Is this what you're looking for? Who are you? I'm Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins? But you left without notice. And I've come back without notice. I see. And what do you expect me to do about it? Pack! Pack! You insolent young person! How dare you speak to me in this way? Silly little girl with your newfangled methods. I bring up children so they know their place. Standing for tradition, I govern my charges. Mishandled charges blow up in your face. I brought up their father. Well, that I don't doubt. You must be so proud of the way he turned out. A shining example, a pillar. The post. They all have their problems, but him more than most. Caruso, where's my lock? Caruso? You let my little lock out of his cage. Now you will bear the full brunt of my rage. Ugh. Ew. <laughs> Stone and treacle for you. Brimstone and treacle. Just a spoonful of sugar. Brimstone and treacle. Just a spoonful of sugar. Brimstone and treacle. Just a spoonful of sugar. like that and I should be as angry as anything if I weren't so pleased to see you where's Miss Andrew she's gone gone why she didn't give a reason ma'am how peculiar well Mary Poppins now that you're back are you going to stay I'll stay for as long as necessary ma'am because the last time you were here well you left without a word of warning how do I know you're not going to do it again you don't oh Constable, I'm so sorry I bothered you. Everything's all right. They're back and... Not all of them, ma'am. We found this one a-wandering in the park. <laughs> Good night, ma'am. Where is she? Miss Andrew? Oh, she left. Left? But how? Uh, she may have thought we were rude. Rude? To Miss Andrew? Well, I can't forgive, but I'll try to forget. In fact, I'd have given you sixpence if I had one. 
George, you haven't noticed. Mary Poppins is back. Is she? Mary Poppins. Well, well. I wonder if I might have a word. There's no point in beating about the bush. Things have not gone well for us since about you left my us. About my wages, I sir. If you don't mind, I won't take any just now. I should prefer to let them accrue. But Mary Poppins, if you only knew how many payments were accruing as it is. Is everything settled? It is. Now I must get started. Jane Michael Spitzbot. Are the drains playing up or is Mrs. Brill cooking? Ah, uh, come along, darling. You made a wrong decision, but how bad is that? I mean, after so many years of good service, what's the worst that could happen? Winifred, if I am to be dismissed by the bank, we'll be destitute. The servants will leave, the house will be repossessed, and we'll be sitting outside with the children on the frosty curbside. We'll still have what really matters. The children and each other. Practically perfect in every way. I guarantee. Practically perfect. We hope you'll stay. Let's wait and see. Uncanny nanny, so hard to find. Unique yet meek, unspeakably kind. You're, You're practically, practically perfect, perfect, and yet I'm sure there's a room for improvement. A few games more. Is that locket new? And if it is, what's inside? A portrait. Whose? You'll know when the time comes and not before. You are going to stay this time, aren't you, Mary Poppins? I'll stay till the chain breaks. What chain? Where? Michael, you must be careful. The room is a bit excited to see me back. And you never know what, what might happen around a fireplace. Oh! Michael! Michael, where are you going? Come down! Mary Poppins! Up here. And where else should a chimney sweep be? A chimney swept, a secret cap, a beer above the gables. Another world to be unfurled that ain't just myths and fables. A chimney sack looks cold and black against the twilight sky. But never fear, there's warmth up here. Perhaps you'll find out why. do I look like? That's better. The world is awfully big, isn't it? And what does that tell you? That we are awfully small and unimportant? Oh, speak for yourself. Not us so much, but our troubles. Down in the nursery, they seem so big, but up here. That's more like it. Troubles are never so bad when you look at them from a little higher up. And always remember, there's plenty of folk ready to help you should you need them. Who? Chim chimani, chim chimani, chim chim charu. Now guardian angels you don't often see. They're not I floating nor grad nor aloof. Nah, they're covered in soot and they're up on your roof. Chim chimani, chim chim charu. See, it's true. Yeah. 
step in. Never need a reason, never need a rhyme. We will step in, step in time. Over the rooftop, step in time. Over the rooftop, step in time. Never need a reason, never need a rhyme. Over the rooftop, step in time. Watch me step, but step in time. Watch me step, but step in time. Never need a reason, never need a rhyme. Watch me step, but step in time. Kick your knees up, step in time. Kick your knees up, step in time. Never need a reason, never need a rhyme. Kick your knees up, step in time. Child is a step in time, parent looks the same. Never make such chance to get it right. Down it seem a perfect crime, down it seem a shame. When the steps aren't going as smoothly as they might. That's we step in, step in time, that's we step, step in time. Never need a reason, never need a rhyme, that's we step in, step in time.
What you gonna do? Step in time. Shout it louder. Step in time. Step, 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 step. step down step, the chimney. Step, step, step. Down the chimney, step in time. Down the chimney, step in time. No need to reason, no need to run. Down the chimney, step in time. Here, wait, can you hold this? What is this? What is all this? Special delivery. Special delivery, step in time. Special delivery, step in time. Never need a reason, never need a rhyme. Special delivery, step in time. Time to go. Good night, Governor. Good night, Governor, step in time. Good night, Governor, step in time. Never need a reason, never need a rhyme. Good night, Governor, step in time. Upstairs now. Jane, you too. Mary Poppins, would you be good enough to explain? First of all, I would like to make one thing clear. Yes? I never explain anything. Come along, children. <laughs> it's happened. The bank chairman wants to see me at the close of business tonight. Tonight? Well, I'm going to come with you and jolly well give your chairman a piece of my mind. That would only make matters worse. We might as well face it. In a few hours, I will have joined the ranks of the unemployed. George, are you quite sure? Quite sure. So we'd better make some plans. In fact, I'm afraid the time has come. <laughs> Do you mean ma your mother's vase? Don't you miss it terribly? Needs must, my dear. <laughs> We always said we were saving it for a rainy day, and tomorrow it looks set to pour. Oh, George, do be careful. Ah! Oh, the heirloom! <laughs> hey, Mrs. Spree, let's go to the kitchen, shall we? You'd better sit down. Now, don't you start. I've opened all the windows, and I... How are you going to say that the smell? Delicious. The old world is turning upside down. <laughs> well, I never. That's where I put them. What are they? Stars. Gingerbread stars I hid once from my nanny. I always knew I'd put them somewhere no one would find them. Trouble was, I couldn't find them either. They're very bright. Aren't they? Even after all this time. Here, let me give you an end. I used to dream that when I grew up, I'd learn everything there was to know about the stars. <laughs> Funny. I haven't thought about all that in years. I'm not usually sentimental. It's good to look back sometimes. Is it? I'm not so sure. A man has dreams of walking with giants to carve his niche in the edifice of time. Before the mortar of his zeal has the chance to congeal, the cup is dashed from his lips, the flame is snuffed burning. <laughs> He's brought to rack and ruin in his prime. <laughs> Wife's a rum go, Governor. And that's the truth. You know what I think? It's Mary Poppins. From the moment she stepped into this house, things began to happen to me. My world was calm, well-ordered, exemplary. Then came this person with chaos in her wake. And now my life's ambitions go in one fell blow. It's quite a bitter pill to take. It's that Poppins woman, she's responsible for all of this. I know the very person. What's that thing she's always saying? A spoonful of sugar, that is all it takes. It changes bread and water into tea and cakes. A spoonful of sugar goes a long, long way. So have yourself in healthy helping every day. A 
healthy helping of trouble, if you ask me. Like you say, Governor, you've got to grind, grind, grind at that grindstone. Though childhood slips like sand through a sieve. And all too soon they buff and groan, and then they've flown. And it's too late for you to give just that spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down. The medicine go down. Medicine go down. Well, good luck, Governor. Thank you, Bert. And good luck to you, too. <laughs> Father, we've come to say goodnight. Daddy, do you remember when we came to the bank? Yes. Well, we were each given a sixpence and we were told to spend them carefully. That's very good advice. What did you buy with them? Uh, nothing yet. And we decided to give them to you. I suppose Mary Poppins put you up to all of this. No, she hasn't said a word. But we know it's been very difficult for you lately and we haven't really been much help. So we thought a bit of extra cash might loosen things up a bit. It is a whole shilling. Thank you. Good night, Daddy. We do love you, you know. Good night. Jane, do you remember when you once asked me who the father of Neleus was? Yes. It was Poseidon, king of the sea. Good night. Daddy's really worried, isn't he? Yes, he is, but always remember that he loves you very much and that's far more important than any jobs or houses or anything else. Are you going to go to the bank with him tomorrow? I wish he'd let me, but he won't. If only there was someone to speak up for him, to take his part, to show them what he's really like inside. Oh, why can't he do that for himself? Because he's a man and a very proud one. <laughs> then you must go. I'd like to go, but I'm afraid it just isn't possible. Well, why not? Because I'm a woman. Mary Poppins says anything is possible if we can only get it out of our own way. Do you really believe that, Mary Poppins? Anything can happen if you let it. Sometimes things are difficult, but you can bet it doesn't have to be so. Changes can be made. You can move a mountain if you use a larger spade. Anything can happen, it's a marvel. You can be a butterfly. Oh, just stay lawful. Stretch your mind beyond fantastic. Dreams are made of strong elastic. Take some sound advice and don't forget it. Anything can happen if you let it. I wonder. Happen if you let it. You won't know a challenge until you've met it. No one does it for you, no one but yourself. Vacillating violets get left up on the shelf. Anything can happen, just imagine. That should be my epitaph. I wear the badge in honor of this world's free thinkers. Those who see beyond their blinkers. Jelly isn't jelly till you set it. Anything can happen if you let it. If you reach for the stars, all you get are the stars. But we found a whole new spin. If you reach for the heavens, you get the stars thrown in. Whoa, whoa, where are we going, Mary, Mary Poppins? Poppins? Mary Poppins? Whoa. Eat the birds, toppins, a bag. Toppins, 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 a bag. Feed the birds. 
sir. Only twopence a bag. I would take it as a great favor if you would kindly feed them for me. Twopence, twopence, twopence a bag. And order. Come in, Banks. Well, Banks, how did it happen? You turned down a scheme that was bound to make millions, and we want to know why. Now I'll tell you why. I refused Mr. Von Hustle because the scheme was a hollow. It had no product, it had no substance, it had no meaning outside the walls of a bank. Oh yes, he told me about assets and profits and growth, but there wasn't a word about people. Now I understand that if a man places any value on real life, and as far as you're concerned, he's a washout. But I'm afraid I do value it, gentlemen. In short, Jolt Banks Esquire has rediscovered the human race. I apologize for ruining the bank. But I do not apologize for understanding that there are more important things in life than making money. Ruining the bank. <laughs> Ruining the bank? Ruining the bank? My dear chap, what are you talking about? You saved our bacon, haven't you heard? Von Hustler's scheme has ruined our rival. You've kept us out of the nastiest scandal since records began. We don't need your apology. We're offering ours. Oh, my word. And another thing. Do you remember giving a loan to a chap named Northbrook? Well, he's repaying it and opening two new factories. With percentage you negotiated, we will look set to make a fortune. Oh, my word. Well, that's just it. We very much hope you might tell us how you did it. Just give us the word. It'll be quite safe with us. Give you the word? Give you the word, I'll give you the word, all right. Supercalifragilistic expialidocious. Even if the sound of it is something quite atrocious. If you say it loud enough, you'll always sound precocious. Supercalifragilistic expialidocious. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, thanks. Forgive him. It is not his fault. It's all because of his nanny, Miss Andrew. The holy terror. She taught me everything I know. Then, then now's your chance to forget it. That's right, and if you want to fight about it, then you've come to the right woman. <clears throat> I believe we still have some business to conduct. Uh, gentlemen, madam, if you please, the man's right. We do have some business to conduct. Now, Banks, George, I'm offering you position of senior manager with Double the salary. <coughs> exactly how much has he made for you? Triple. <coughs> Quadruple your present rate. Close your mouth, George. We are not a codfish. Well? I accept. But you must first understand one thing. From now on, my family comes first. Agreed. Agreed? Agreed! Winifred, I'm afraid I've underestimated you. How can you forgive me? How can you ask? It was selfish of me to keep you off the stage. You'll want to go back, and I don't mind if you do. No, I loved it, but I found a role I'd rather prefer, and it's going to keep me extremely busy for a very long time. Anything can happen, raise the curtain. Things you thought impossible will soon seem certain. Though at first it may sound clownish, see the world more upside downish. Turn it on its head, then pirouette it. Anything can happen if you let it. If you reach for the stars, or you get all the stars. But we found a whole new spin. If you reach for the heavens, you get the stars thrown in. The stars thrown in. Oh. I want to Do you indeed? I went. 
mind you don't ask for the moon as well. Not for a very long time. But you can always keep an eye on the stars until you return. Here. But it's your telescope. So it is. Keep it if you like. It's a present. Thank you. Now run along in. It's getting cold. I love you, Mary Poppins. You're a fine boy, Michael Banks, and one day you'll be a fine man. Oh, Mary Poppins, it makes me so anxious when you talk like that. Like what? Oh, gentle and kind and not a bit like you. To be cross again, Mary Poppins, oh, do be cross. Is that the thanks I get for the trouble I've taken? Oh, <laughs> that's better. <laughs> Those are dainty, Bert. They're yours, Mary. I painted them for you. It's tonight, isn't it? Yes, Bert. Well, goodbye then, Mary. Goodbye, Bert. Look after yourself. job when it's complete there is a sense of bittersweet that moment when you know the task is done though in your heart you'd like to stay to help things on their way you've always known they must do alone. There. Practically perfect, and I hope it remains so. <sighs> What's happened? Something's missing. The Look. plant's gone. It's Mary Poppins' locket. Oh, there's a note too. What does it say? Dear Jane and Michael. Michael had got the telescope, so this is for you. It's a picture of the three of us. Shh, Christ, stop, don't 
from Mary Poppins with a great deal of love. Mary Poppins? She's gone. Gone? How peculiar. She'll be back. Now what do you think of this? <laughs> it's the best I've ever seen. Could we fly it together? Oh, Daddy! Mary... <sighs> Mary Poppins won't be coming back. She's gone forever. My dear, how could you possibly know such a thing? Because we don't need her anymore. And other families will. Won't they, Daddy? They will. I wonder if she's right, George. And I suppose we could do without a nanny from now on. What do you think? I think you'd better come and dance with me. George, <laughs> this is serious. <laughs> Look, isn't that a shooting star? You can borrow my telescope if you'd like. I was right. Wish on it, children. We won't forget you, Mary Poppins. We will never forget. My dearest love. Thank you.